All right, we are in London at the event production show and we're here for two days. We've got most of the team here. So we've got Ryan, who I'm going to talk to today, and we've got Annette and Kat behind the camera, waving. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, and we're here today to talk to potential collaborations, event organizers, hear all the pain points in the industry. And we thought, it's super interesting to talk with Ryan because we were both there when this whole concept even came about. Ryan, we'll go back to the start, kind of just how it all came about when that festival company approached us and talked about building that project. So yeah, yeah. sure thing. Obviously, we run our own consultancies and we're already working together on a range of projects. And what happened is we had that festival come to us and say, we want the best festival app, not the standard one, not one of the ones that people are used to, we want the best ones. They already saw the others, they see the competition on the market and thought, yeah, like we want something better than that. And what would that take? And they've, they've come to us, they've come to us for engineering support, they, they came to you for design support, how to build this best possible event app. And we, we did the investigation, we did that technical analysis and we obviously put a proposal to you that proposal did not work out it was it was too expensive for them however upon discussing with yourself a cat Annette and Mahalo we realized that there's a there's a gap in the market yeah to really build that like world-class event app platform for everyone not just the massive festivals of like a hundred thousand plus attendees for everyone to build something that's actually equitable and but yeah people people can enjoy it so after we had you know done that proposal and there was an evident gap in that market, how, how we then went from that next stage, how we kind of got everyone involved, how we talked to everybody, and got them infused by the idea. I think it was from like a range of range of discussions, right? I think we all had yeah. discussions like individually, so we already were all working together, and it was yes. like, well, we had this project, it didn't work out, but we're all still enthusiastic about it. We all still want to make it happen. We see, we have the vision of where we want it to go. Because so we put so much time into thinking about it as it's just this incredible yeah, it's yeah. Really, amazing platform. to really understanding the problems and the pain points and how this platform could help it's like we just have to build it like we we, we can't we can't not build this thing yeah. this sounds so cool it sounds so exciting and just see where <laughs> see where it ends up i think it's kind of like a group decision right to yeah, yeah. Kind of there wasn't much uh, encouragement needed let's say <laughs> didn't need to, <laughs> was pretty I didn't need, didn't need to encourage everyone too much <laughs> everyone sees and everyone's enthusiastic yeah. about it everyone in the team is enthusiastic about doing cool things with tech to, to yeah. really help you so obviously you came up with the the viking name and the viking brand and and the really distinctive look how did that come around so it's an interesting question because it's a little bit more unconventional to what i'm typically exposed to in the, the kind of design world um i'm as you're aware, very kind of into meditation and, and spiritualism. And I, I tend to incorporate a lot of that practice into the way that I use my creative mind. It seems to kind of help me unlock kind of different ways that I can think about things. Um, so originally it started with the, my traditional process of spewing out all the ideas kind of on the page, different kind of visuals, any kind of icons that come to my mind, words, associations and then mood board. So this sounds like a very traditional kind of route that a lot of designers would go, getting it all out, mood boards. But then I will take it and, and do meditations with it and start to channel a lot of that more intuitive side of my kind of nature. And it will then infuse and direct the way that I will take the brand. So it was really interesting once I had kind of figured out that it was going to go along the lines of kinship and family and all around that kind of realm, because I know that that's what festivals have cultivated. They've cultivated the connections, they've cultivated uh, almost, you know, it's, it's close knit. It feels like a family. And I wanted something that really represented that. And when you look back at the tradition of Vikings, with a G, <laughs> um, a, lot of, a lot of their kind of celebrations, they, they bring a lot of people together. There's food, there's a lot of music, yeah. and it sounds just what we have in our modern day yeah. of, of music festivals, exactly. where you've got those food venues, you've got the music, everyone coming together and having a great time. Yeah. So, a modern day version of that. But the, the, the reason that we removed the G 
was to really focus on it ending with kin, by kin. Yeah. So the kinship, cultivating that aspect. The connections. The connections, the family, the closeness. Um, and we really wanted to make sure that the people, the attendees, feel like they're part of something. They feel like what the festival organizers are trying to cultivate. We want that whole feel and experience to channel throughout. So then, of course, once you've got the name, the Viking, it's then the visuals. How do we take that? You know, we've, we've got that, the Viking origin that I talked about. It's like, how can we bring in a little bit of that, but also have this kind of modern twist? And uh, this is where some of my uh, more woo-woo spirituality <laughs> stuff comes in. So I was doing a meditation and was presented with this, with this figure, and he had literally almost like the Viking symbol face painted on himself and I still have the doodle back at home after I came out of it and I was like that's such a cool symbol <laughs> and then obviously you know various variations of that and um, kind of you know quite quickly realized that we can incorporate the more sail aspect of what the Viking boats would have been like hence the kind of more swooshed V in that shape so um, it's, uh, you know, maybe there's some other kind of spiritual creatives out there. <laughs> you never know, but that's, that seems to be the way that I've, I've kind of, I'm moving forward uh, in the design space. But once I'd created that brand, that kind of image, that vibrant feel that I wanted to kind of uh, to give the business, it was then, you know, us looking into the roadmap. It was looking into how we actually going to turn this into a product. Sure, yeah. So obviously we've been working behind the scenes on this for quite a while. We soft launched at the start of this year to really get the brand out there, get the message out there that we're working on this platform to really really help all of the events in the, in the industry. We've obviously been working on the engineering behind the scenes as well. We're currently building our technical demo that we've already been able to, to present to uh, some festivals, some events. And we are continuing to build it. So we've got a roadmap going all the way throughout the, the rest of the year going into next year. We're looking to have our MVP, our initial version of the app, actually built for the start of May, which is incredibly exciting, but the work doesn't stop there. Like we've, we have the full roadmap, there is so much to build. And there's so many, so many features, it's interesting. <laughs> Having been here over the past couple of days, really speaking of the, the vendors, the event organizers, the people actually in the industry, obviously, that feedback is incredibly important to us and being able to to really get that and say okay we were, had prioritized the roadmap we now have some changes that we're going to make to to bring some features forward to push some features back to really make sure that we're building the right thing first and then to to really evolve it exactly what the industry needs rather than just what what we think we're you know working exactly, exactly. obviously we have experience in our industries and in engineering design operations but it's important that we really speak to those people in the industry and that's why we're working with our launch partners right is to to get that feedback to to make sure that when we're when we're building they can give feedback immediately and say yeah this is this is good this is what we need oh this would solve our problems more effectively that's what we're really looking for exactly and it really lives up to what how we've like defined the brand we're all about keeping and cultivating those connections and we want to keep and cultivate it from our side as well with those festivals that we're working with and and just everyone working in harmony to push the industry forward. It kind of leads on to something really nice because we're working with two launch partners at the minute. We've got the Big Retreat and Dubbed Out and we're going to be working very collaboratively with them and, and bringing them a, a fantastic first version of the app. And even though it's the first version, it's still going to be an incredible standard that we're only going to keep on building as the years go on. So kind of how can anyone listening to this now get involved and be part of this kind of next generation of festival apps. Sure, so any festival, any event that has obviously listened to this or maybe seen, seen any of our social media posts, if they would like to work with us and be one of our first initial launch partners, the spots are going quickly. They should reach out to uh, viking.events, make a call with us and we're happy to run them through the platform, give them a demo and see how we can work with them moving forward.